Hi everybody, uh, here's a quick video on how you actually get your changes back onto your RC600. Um, someone asked it on the Facebook page and rather than type it all out, I thought I'll be a lazy bastard and I'll just record a video. So, here we go. Uh, go off and start up the software. So normally you come in and you would connect to either an offline copy of your Roland folder or you would connect to your actual physical Looper's Roland folder itself. Now if you're obviously connected to the, the Looper's Roland folder, any changes you make are actually made to your live files, you know. Um, and when you take the Looper out of storage mode, those changes will be there. Um, if you're working offline, which I recommend you do because it makes things safer for you, um, you've got basically two methods of getting your changes back to your Roland folder. You either use Explorer, you know, where you'll go off and you'll just copy um, the actual locations and the and the WAV folders that you want, and just kind of copy them into your your live Roland folder. Or you can use Sync with, from within the software. Um, so I'm just going to connect normally to an offline folder just to remind you what you can see when you come in so when you come in here you've got your save button here um, and if I right click on any of these locations I've got this sync pull and sync push now if my looper was available I could sync push this memory location up to the, the looper so sync push, but it says sync to looper not available because the software's detected that I'm not actually connected to the looper or that the looper's not available on my network. And by the same token, if I wanted to take this you know, memory location five and refresh it using, I don't know, like a, a funky file that I recorded on it last time I used it, I could right click and I could say sync pull. And that would then pull any changes down from the looper. Um, so let me put my looper into storage mode and then I'll reconnect. Um, so offline I'm just going menu, menu, USB, storage mode on. You can see there's my Roland folder there. So that's now available on my computer. So if I then go back to my home screen and then connect. And go back into memory editor. I now have these two buttons here. Let's say pull latest from the looper and push this location to the looper. Uh, so if if your looper's available, you'll see these two buttons, and you can use them to kind of push your changes up. You know, so if I was to go in here and change something, actually, I don't want to change that. <laughs> let, let me change something that I don't really care about. Okay, I'll, I'll drag that off a little bit. Um, I could then push that up to the looper. Yeah, so push this location up. But now it says, but you don't have any save changes. Yeah. So save it first, then sync it. So I'll press save. Yep, that's saved. And I'll then push that up to the looper. Confirm. Yep. So that's then copied that up and it's now on your looper's drive so that when you take your looper out of sync mode, um, it will then have the changes. So that's quite cool. Um, so yeah, so right click, sync pull, sync push, and if you're connected, you've got sync pull, sync push on here as well. I think in the set list manager, it's also in there as well. So sync pull and sync push. So this is really cool. So if, let's say you're working with a set list um, and I wanted to change memory 27 to be this boy here, so I just Put memory 27 on there. Let's say yes. That then becomes the thing that I wanted. I could then right click here and go, you know, sync push. Say yes. You know, so that's basically push that up to the to the looper. Right. Let's see if we can get another method for syncing these things as well. Okay, so I'm connected to a backup. <coughs> Press connect. 
my looper is available on the system so if I go into memory editor I can see the sync push and sync pull and that's all there if I go into memory manager and I can then select in here a set of memory locations so that's me selected 1 to 9 so normally within memory manager if, say I wanted to change so I say I wanted to sync some settings, so if I wanted my pedal settings for A, B and D of this memory location, if I wanted to blat that across some targets, I could put it in here. Uh, you know, I want to, I want to do it from memory location 90 to 95 plus memory location 99. And I could say update targets and it would copy whatever I've selected here, you know, all these things that, that you can select the modes and the EQ etc um, I could press update targets and it would then set that in there so that's cool but what you can also do in here if I just select 1 to 5 because I'm connected to the looper I can just sync push memory locations 1 to 5 to my looper so if I just press that sync push say yep so this isn't making any changes here. When I'm using the sync push button, it ignores all of these checkboxes. You know, so these these won't do anything. And then here you can see sync push complete. So I've now uploaded one to five up to my looper. You know, and then yeah, I can change it again. So if, if people aren't familiar with this, I could say I want 10, 14. 18 to 23 and 788 pushed up. Yep, and then in here on the taskbar, you can see as it works through them, you can see it pushing them up. Yeah, so there's another way you can just do like a bulk sync. It doesn't do a, a bulk pull, but it does a bulk push. If you want it to do a bulk pull, let me know. I can write it. it. Won't take long. But anyway, that's method two of getting your stuff synced to the looper. Another thing I thought I would mention regarding connecting to your looper. Um, so I'm now I'm connected to a offline folder, yes, which is a backup. Um, if I was to completely delete everything that's in there and then say connect the software kind of checks and says oh well you've got your looper available let's connect there you know so by default if you were to, to zero that out and you know make that blank and then just press connect if your looper's connected it will connect directly to it and you see the icon here changes to say you know connected to the RC unit via USB so that's quite useful um, once you are connected to your actual RC unit, I recommend you use the backup feature. So if I press backup here, it will say, where do I want to put the backup? So I'll select my RC600 backups folder and just say select folder. And that's all I need to do. And now what it's done is, you can see in here, it's actually backing up with a timestamp on there of the 4th of May, sorry, 4th of June, so that's pretty useful as well, so when you're actually creating your backups, you don't even need to name them, you know, you just select the the parent directory where you want your backup to exist, and it will create the backup and stick a date stamp on it for you, cool, anyway, that's it for me, cheers everyone, bye bye.